Coronary Artery Bypass Graft. Doctors had a look at my heart, said I need heart surgery. I was pretty worried. They explained what was going on. Your heart is a pump that pumps blood all around your body. There are pipes that bring blood to your heart muscles to keep it pumping. The doctors call these pipes coronary arteries. They told me my pipes were starting to block up. My blood was flowing slower and may stop. This is what's happening to yours too. This makes it very hard for your heart muscle to pump. Some of your heart may start to die, but they can go around this block by putting in a new pipe and making another path for the blood. Doctors call this a bypass. This is short for coronary artery bypass graft, where if one of your heart pipes, coronary arteries, are blocking up, they can go around it, bypass it, and stitch on, graft on, a new piece of pipe. This will improve the blood flow to your heart and help it pump stronger. You might need one, two, three, or even four bypasses during the operation. It depends on where in your heart the blocks are and how bad they are. I know I can't live without my heart pumping strongly. The doctors thought it was best for me to have this operation. That meant that I would need to sign if I wanted to say yes. Doctors call this a consent form. Hmm, consent. Giving consent means that you understand what is going to happen. So you can say yes. You have to decide whether to give consent and say yes or say no. So they told me all about it, about the operation, the healing journey, and getting stronger after, and the risks. Now, I'm going to tell you all about it so you can decide to give consent and say yes or say no. First, the operation. On the day, you'll be taken into the operation room and lie down on a bed. The doctors call this the theatre. An Aboriginal health practitioner can come with you for support if you want. There will be a lot of doctors and nurses there to help during the surgery. The first person you'll see is the anaesthetist. They are like a sleep doctor. The anaesthetist's job is to make sure you are in a very deep sleep and breathing during all the operation. They will make sure that you do not feel anything. You will not feel any pain. You will not remember any of the operation. The anaesthetist will stay with you, one-to-one -one at your head, and care for you during all the operation. They will give you an injection of medicine. The doctors call this an anaesthetic, which puts you into a very deep sleep. Then they will put a tube into your mouth to breathe for you. You'll be connected to a machine which will do all your breathing. The doctors who do the operation are called surgeons. The operation will take three to four hours. One surgeon will cut open your chest through the bone between your ribs. The doctors call this bone your sternum. Another surgeon works to take a piece of vein or an artery to use as a new piece of pipe. Next. They stop blood pumping through your heart. This lets the surgeon operate on your heart. A specially trained person makes your blood flow through a machine. Your blood will leave your body through a tube and go into this machine which puts oxygen in and then pumps it back into your body providing a good supply of blood. This makes sure that your body gets plenty of blood and oxygen while your heart is being operated on. Then the surgeon stitches the new pipe into your heart. If you are having a valve repaired or replaced, this will also happen now. 
When the surgeon has finished, your heart takes over the pumping again. Your chest wall is joined back together with a special type of steel wire, then the skin is stitched up. This steel wire will stay inside your body. You will then be moved to the intensive care area, where you will have your own nurse to look after you. The doctors call this area the intensive care unit, or ICU. Whew. So, that's what happens in the operation. Sometimes, because this is a big operation, which makes you bleed and lose blood, the doctors might need to give you a blood transfusion. This is clean blood collected from another person and given to you to help top up your blood levels. You can decide if you want this or not and sign the consent form to say yes if you do. Now, I'm going to tell you about healing, getting stronger after the operation. When you wake up, you will have pain in your chest. A lot of pain. It is important to tell the nurses when you have pain because they can give you medicine to help. The good news is, this pain won't last for too long. Also, when you wake up, you will have a lot of tubes coming out of you. The next day, many of these tubes will be taken out. A physio will come to get you sitting out of bed the day after the operation. <coughs> Although you won't feel much like moving, <coughs> it is really important to sit out of bed and move as much as you can. This will help you to get better sooner. Then, a few days later, you can walk a short distance around the ward. Each day, you will walk further and become stronger. And it is important to cough. <coughs> You'll be given a coughing pillow to hold against your chest, wrapping your arms around it to help with the pain of coughing. <coughs> and breathe deeply as much as you can so you don't get a chest infection the nurse will help to remind you family can come visit you by day five you may be ready to go home by talking stories yarning with the Aboriginal health workers and my family, here and on the phone. That helped me keep my spirit strong. Now, there are risks with having the operation, which means there are things that can go wrong. They told me all about the risks because I had to know about these so I could decide if I was going to have the operation. The risks are different for each person, but they explain them all to me. They explain that five people out of 100 people may get a wound infection or pneumonia or need a pacemaker. That one person in 100 people may have to stay in the intensive care unit for longer or may have renal or liver failure or bleeding, a stroke or could even die. And there are risks of being put to sleep with anaesthetic by the anaesthetist, the sleep doctor. The anaesthetist will come and talk with you before the operation to explain these risks. It is important to think about these risks when you are making your decision about consent, but also the risks of what might happen if you don't have the surgery. If you want to know more about these, Ask your Aboriginal health worker or the doctor to explain them to you. The risks are different for each person, but they explain them all to me. And they explain the risks of not doing the operation. Hmm. I said yes to having the bypass operation. I gave my consent. I said yes. How did it go? After healing from my operation, I feel a lot better. My body and my spirit are stronger. 
I even take my grandkids out walking on country. Now that you know about the operation, the healing journey and the risks, you can decide for yourself. Decide if you are going to give your consent and say yes to having the bypass operation.